Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're gonna find out which primer is best. What up, mini family? With all these primer products on the market, I'm left with one question that I'm sure you've had at some point, and that is which of these primers are the best? In this video, we'll be comparing a number of different properties against a lot of different primer brands. But if you don't know what primer is or what the proper technique is for applying primer, you should first watch the video linked in the top right hand corner of the screen. Bonus, you get to see me being super awkward because it's one of my my earliest videos. This idea which brand reigns supreme goes far beyond simply just primer. So in the month of November, we'll be comparing paint brushes, paint starter sets, and air brushes. In this video, however, we'll be comparing these brands. Armory, Army Painter, Citadel, Badger, Tamiya, Vallejo, and Krylon. We'll be comparing their paint adhesion or how well paint sticks to the primer, detail retention, finish, sandability, and also durability. Before we start getting into comparison, let's address a little bit of a primer myth that I hear a lot. If you guys know me, there's one thing I hate more than Space Marines, and that is untested and unproven mini painting claims, of which there are many. And living in Minnesota, one that I see all the time is primer is negatively affected by winter. I see posts in my local Facebook groups all the time that say things like, oh, it's gonna start snowing here, better prime all my models because I won't be able to do it for the next six months. So I decided to test a few scenarios over the past couple of months. For my first two tests, I primed two minis outside in the dead of winter. I brought one of them inside to cure and left the other one outside to cure. The idea is that if you wanted to prime in winter and were just concerned about it, you could just bring it inside to cure. But Scott, what if it's humid outside? For my third test, I primed outside when it was intensely humid and left it to cure outside. For my fourth and final test, I primed the miniature outside when the temperature and humidity were at moderate values. Can you tell the difference between any of these models? Because I sure can. But Scott, what if I want to prime on the edge of an active volcano? Just... Damn! Joking aside, primer is pretty resilient stuff, but I do want to acknowledge that some primer brands do actually state on the can itself to not use the primer under 50 degrees Fahrenheit or in humid conditions. So I can see where this notion came from. If you do need to prime a bunch of guys outside when it's cold, you'll notice that your primer can starts to lose pressure toward the end of your priming session. One way to resolve this really simply is to have a bowl of warm water right next to you and put the aerosol can inside of that warm water when you start to lose pressure. Warm it up a little bit, shake it up, and you'll have that pressure and nice flow come right back to you. All right, now on to some primer comparisons. One thing that's really easy to tell a difference between is the finish of a primer, how shiny or how matte it is. I'll say one thing about finish is that generally you prefer a finish that is more matte. It's much easier to paint a matte model than it is a shiny one. Imagine trying to paint a model that's kind of greased up. Now I can't say that paint clings to primer better when it is more matte, but it sure is a heck of a lot easier to paint. For black primer, the order is pretty obvious. Armory is the most matte primer, followed by Badger, Vallejo, Citadel, Army Painter, and then Krylon. For white, the order is a little less obvious. They're all seemingly the same finish, at least not different enough to really matter. Another important property of primer is how much it obscures detail. My idea was to prime a bunch of Lego pieces and take a look at the Lego logo on a single nib and compare them. It turns out the Lego logo isn't consistent across all blocks, so as a method of comparison, it isn't the greatest one. But one brand sticks out being particularly bad, and that's Krylon. You can see how it's collecting more darkly toward the recesses of the logo, which is not at all what you want a primer to do. Get good, Krylon. <coughs> <coughs> I wasn't entirely satisfied with this comparison, so I went ahead and took before and after pictures of each primer brand on a small 28 mil scale figure's head to kind of get a better idea. I will say that airbrushes have a distinct advantage here because you have a much greater control over the amount of primer you apply at the expense of some convenience. 
I can't honestly tell which one has the best detail retention. They all obscure details slightly. To me, this suggests that they're all pretty similar and once you get paint on the primer, the differences fade into oblivion even more. None of these are deal breakers other than Krylon. A detail that's important to some model kit painters is how the primer sands. Does it tear off like a piece of vinyl or does it turn into a nice grain? Every single brand did fine other than one, Vallejo. Both white and black starts to chip off instead of turn into a nice dust. Now let's do a test that compares the strength of each primer's ability to cling to plastic. This is important if you are often applying masking material to your bare primer and don't want it to lift off the primer when you pull the tape or anything else you're using. My test started by scoring an X in each of the primer brands to compromise the surface integrity. The intention is that the area closest to where the two lines meet is the weakest, and as you get further out, it'll get stronger. I then place the tape on the X, changing in between each brand, and pull the tape off. We can measure their adhesion by how much primer pulls off with the tape. Again, every brand did 100% fine other than Vallejo. In fact, Vallejo did so poorly that I felt I had to redo it, and I did. And while my results were not as bad a second time, they were still worse than every other brand I tested. I wanted to see the other brands fail, so I made this little scraping tool that made a consistent score. I made a grid of scores on each primer and did the test again. Once again, the only brand to fail this test was Vallejo. Another claim I'd like to test is whether or not primer helps paint adhere better and whether or not having spotty coverage helps with this adherence. For this, we'll need to make a little jig. My little testing apparatus has a track with a cart that can be pulled by a string. My cart has a 220 grit sandpaper on the bottom and weights in it. My idea was that I could change up the grit of the sandpaper and the weight inside the cart if I wasn't seeing results fast enough. I also put paint on top of the primer and the reason why I did this was because as miniature painters, what we often do is in the course of playing games or painting, we're often rubbing paint off of our miniature. So I thought it'd be a very useful test to see which primer sticks to the paint the best. It seems like full coverage gets the best paint adherence. You'd think that maybe spotty would do best because it's almost grittier, but the reality of primer is that when applied evenly, it creates a very fine layer of grip tape for whatever is going on next to cling to, but it isn't easy to see with a naked eye. Now let's take this jig and test a lot of different primers. I bought some ABS plastic that was fairly glossy from my local hobby store and sanded it until I could see no more gloss with a sanding sponge. I then primed all 11 brands on the board, my goal being to fully cover the gray ABS as we discovered that full coverage gives us the best paint adhesion. I covered the primer in paint again to see if a particular brand would be best at clinging to paint and started my tests. Baby, 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 don't you know yet? I've been on a high ever since we met And I just smile so wide When I look in your eyes yeah, I cannot control what's happening inside and Don't let me go oh, I just wanna hold ya Do everything for you I'll always adore ya I was concerned with inconsistencies affecting my results in this test, so I did it eight times. I then sat down and started to look at all my trials and started to order them best to worst. My plan was to add all their scores up and average out the results to see if one was consistently better than others. But then I had an idea. What if I created an online poll for all you guys to participate in and instead of only getting my opinion, I got all of yours. So that's what I did. If you want to participate in some of these polls, make sure to hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you get notifications when I post things to my YouTube community. I got about 200 of you guys to participate in my test, which was pretty cool because the test was kind of lengthy and maybe a little inconvenient to take. But one thing I want to mention about this test is that it only considers who took first place in all the trials, not who took second or third or fourth. So you might actually prefer one of the brands that has less paint adherence that took second or third a lot, given it has other properties that you like. It's chart time! That being said, the very clear winner of the black primer category was the Vallejo primer, which got 48.3 of your guys' votes for first place. The next closest black primer was Badger with 15.2%. 
It's fair to say that quantitatively, Vallejo has better paint adherence than other brands. That gap in voting is too large to attribute to error. When it comes to white primer, it's a little less clear. Vallejo comes out on top again, capturing 33.5% of the votes, with Armory Primer coming in a close second at 28.1%. This is a little too close to make an objective claim that Vallejo is for sure better. With that final comparison, that brings our testing segment to an end. Now we'll talk about conclusions and also which brand I recommend. All right, so which of these primers do I recommend? Well, I gotta say they're all fairly similar, but they differ significantly in both finish and also price. So let's start with the aerosol recommendation. For aerosol, I have to give it to Armory. The finish, especially on black, is dead matte. It doesn't obscure detail any more than the other ones, and it has good paint adhesion and plastic adhesion, and it's the cheapest per fluid ounce option. This primer was definitely a black horse coming into the comparison. I bought it on a whim at a local gaming store, expecting nothing from it, and it truly surprised me. It feels weird to recommend it because I've actually heard bad things about this primer, but nothing bad occurred during my testing. When it comes to airbrush primers, the answer kind of depends. For me, one of the biggest things that I suffer from is wiping my paint off of my miniatures while I am painting them. You can actually see it on several of my finished models. So for me, the primer that I'm going to prefer is Vallejo White and Black because of that better paint adherence. But if durability and plastic adhesion is important to you and sandability, then Badger is an obvious recommendation. I've had a ton of it, I've been using it forever and it works just great. And in fact, several other brands rebrand Badger Primer as their own, if that suggests anything about the quality of the primer. This was a pretty eye-opening test to me and in the description of this video, there will be links to the images that I used for drawing my conclusions so you can kind of figure out for yourself which primer brand is best. In the description as well, there are affiliate links to all of these primers that I reviewed, including the ones that I recommend. And if you purchase using these links, I get a little bit of a commission at no extra cost to you. It means a lot to me uh, to get your support in this way. If you liked this video, we have several more kind of comparisons coming up in the month of November. The next one being paintbrushes, one that I am particularly invested in. If you wanna support the channel, I have a merchandise store. I have a Patreon account with a bunch of fun rewards. I have an Amazon shopping link that you can use when you're shopping on Amazon to get me a little bit of a kickback each time you buy anything from toilet seats to lettuce, uh, subscribe or die, and most importantly, don't forget to pay my medals!